Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special emergency edition of Gives and Bank podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here with Mark Givler. A big news item, Mark, has happened. Please share with everybody why we are uh, being an emergency podcast right now. Yeah, huge. Another huge commitment for Ohio State. Uh, Kojo Antwi, uh, top 100 receiver, scoop 100 receiver as well. Um, you know, committed to the Buckeyes. Huh, long, long recruitment there. Um, you know, Texas A&M had momentum for a while. Uh, Georgia at one point had some momentum. Um, took a trip to Alabama uh, in June. Took an official to USC at the end of June. Um, but that that mid-June official to Ohio State uh, was huge. Uh, I think they answered a lot of questions on the academic side of things. I know that the parents are very academics oriented. And I think that actually pushed things over the top, um, along with obviously the development that, that Ohio State has proven uh, with Brian Hartline at wide receivers coach. Yeah, I was reading an excellent story on CBS um, uh, from a CBS writer about the Antwi family coming over from Ghana when Koja was about six months old or something like that. And he's got older brothers, like 20 years older than him. And so it was kind of a, a family affair of getting Kojo to different places. And he's got brothers and siblings like spread out across the country and they would come and get him and take him like come to come from Texas to pick him up in Georgia and take him somewhere. And so it's pretty impressive that he uh, has been able to blossom this way. And you mentioned all of those visits this month. So I think he's listed like six, six foot, six, one, one ninety. It's pretty powerful looking receiver. I, for some reason in my mind, when um, I feel like in the past, I, I said he kind of reminds me of KJ Hill, but then I went back this morning and watched him again. And he's, I don't know that he's KJ Hill. He's, he's very powerful. He's very quick, sudden. I don't know if he's a, I don't think he's probably a four, 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 you know, mid four or five, something like that, but he is, he's a strong kid. What do you see out of him? What has impressed you about him? Yeah. I mean, very physical, very strong, but, but has some explosiveness to him, you know, the top end speed is, is good, um, but I think he gets to his top speed pretty quickly. Uh, he's, a, he's a really physical open field runner. He, he, there's, you know, he takes a bubble screen and he kind of runs through three guys. He's a hard guy to tackle in the open field. Um, w- once he gets a full head of steam, that's not a guy I think a lot of defensive backs want to get in front of and, and, you know, stick their nose in there. So he does a lot of things well there. And then, you know, the one thing I, the one thing I think I really like about him is when you watch him, um, on the outside, and you kind of look at – there's several uh, instances you can see him uh, going up against press man coverage, and you watch his releases, you watch his feet. I mean, not only is he – you know, yeah, you're going you're to have a tough time, you know, with the upper body strength that he has and kind of bodying him up, but he's got these great – you know, he's got these little quick feet, and uh, he's able to get these great releases at the line of scrimmage. Um, so I don't know how you jam him. You know, I don't know how you jam a guy who's that strong but also quick. So – that was another thing for me. And, and again, like a lot of the guys, Heartline recruits, I think he can play just about anywhere um, at, at receiver. I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm, I, you, you are the scout, you are the, the talent evaluator. I'm just a guy. And I was always impressed by how, because he would face that press man, like they'd be right up on him and he would just, they would, they would stand no chance, even though they're right there with them. And, and, and if they're off a little bit, then he just uh, abuses them that way. So I was really impressed with his route running. He seems like a, a technician, which would fall in line. You mentioned the family is very academic or academic oriented. Like it feels like he studies being a receiver and being a football player. And you could see that in his game. Yeah, he's just he's a hard worker. Um, just great work ethic. A uh, guy who does, again, you look at the film and a lot of the little things are done correctly. And just, you know, the way he catches you know, a lot of hands catches, not a lot of body catches. Um, the routes are precise. Uh, just um, I think he's a really, really good player. I, I mentioned um, kind of in, in the impact piece, uh, you know, there's some, I think if you took the best things that Austin Mack did, for Ohio state. And you put that into maybe a little bit of a better athlete. I think, I think that's what Kojo is. It's funny. You mentioned Austin Mack because I'm looking at him. You said he could play everywhere. I'm, I'm, I was wondering, is he maybe the X of this class? And you know, Austin Mack was listed at six, two. He was probably closer to six, one, once all of the measurements came in and he played X quite a bit, although he eventually played all three spots. And I was wondering if maybe Kojo could be that guy. Now he is the fourth receiver 
in Ohio State's 2022 class. Mark, is it safe to say that they're done at receiver in 2022 as long as they keep these four? Yeah, I don't I don't think they're going to do anything to rock the boat there. Um, you know, I know CJ Williams is kind of still out there in the abyss, but I, I don't think that's going to uh, I, I think that probably falls apart now would be my guess. I know there's been talk about an official visit in the fall. I, I don't think, I don't think Ohio State's going to rock this boat right now. I think in, I think in a perfect world, they would only like to take three every year just kind of for, for spacing, but obviously there's a, there's a numbers shortage right now on the roster due to some of the attrition. So I would be really surprised if we were talking about receiver recruiting again for uh, the 2022 class, but you know, you never know. I mean, like I, I did mention, you know, it's a much more stable, I think, uh, foursome than the what we're seeing at defensive back right now, <laughs> where Ohio State's kind of being forced to keep a lot of irons in the fire. I don't, I don't see that here. Um, a lot of those receivers are kind of low key guys, so I, I don't, I don't think we're going to be talking too much about receiver recruiting in the next few months as it pertains to twenty two. So now Hartline gets to get a jump start on twenty three. So good luck, uh, you know, the rest of the country, whoever is out there, you're trying to get 2023 receivers because <laughs> Brian Hartline's already on to it. Well, and that's, is it that how he landed, did so well with 2022 is he got the 2021s locked up early, got the 2020 guys locked up early, and he almost gets a head start on the rest of the nation because here we are, it's the 5th of July and they're done with receivers. And now he can just focus on 2023, probably some 2024s as well. Yeah, I mean he's 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 able to just get these relationships built early and and he kind of he look, he likes to operate. Some guys like to offer, you know, 30 kids for four spots or 20 kids for four spots. He does not do that. He really kind of focuses on maybe six to eight guys and he wants, you know, he's trying to get, you know, three of those six and um you know, obviously this year is going to be four, but he really is selective and he, I think that helps him build good relationships when you're not trying to, you know, talk to 20 different kids when you're only talking to a handful of kids, I think it's easier to build relationships that way and build a, build a comfort level there. And so that's, that's obviously been working for him. Yeah. You meant the the targeted focus. Uh, I I don't imagine like Caden Saunders, Westerville uh, receiver who did not get the Ohio state offer. You figure most big schools, if he's an in-state kid, he's going to get that offer but Heartline has been targeted and focused on a number of guys. And until those guys fall through, you know, and that rarely happens with him, <laughs> like his targets generally hit. So let's break down a little bit of the, where everybody fits in because they have Caleb Burton out of Texas. Uh, Keon Gray's also committed uh, Caleb Brown. Correct. Yep. Yes. And now you add in uh, Kojo Antwi. So how do they all fit together? Is there an X, a Z and, and an H in here? Um, you know, I think what they have, I think they've got an H in Caleb Brown. I think they've probably got an X in Kojo. And I think Burton and Grays and, and really even Kojo to that point can play just about anywhere. So I think they've got a lot of interchangeable parts here. Um, I think Grays and Burton are guys who really can play anywhere. I, I just, I see so much for, and I just saw Keon um, th- this past weekend. So I got, I've got a very recent uh, scouting report on that one. Um, he was tremendous at the opening. So um, I, I think they've got some guys who can move around, but I do, I do think, you know, Kojo probably X definitely outside somewhere. And I think Caleb, is clearly an H. And then from there, it's, you know, let's figure out how to get the best guys on the field. Well, and I think, was it maybe back in the winter or so, Keon Graves was maybe working in the slot and some of the seven on seven stuff. And then, but, he, but he's just so effective outside. Uh, and that's why you look at his high school film and, and he, he has this resemblance to Chris Olave and the way he plays and his build. And, and so I, I then try to imagine Chris Olave in the slot. And I'm like, I don't know if that's best place for him. And I maybe they go with that with Keon Grace, but Caleb Burton, I agree, could could do whatever they need. And this is something that Brian Hartline does. They cross train everybody. And I guess it's probably best not to have these guys pigeonholed because if it doesn't fit, now you now you're stuck with something. Yeah, I th- I think that's I think that's definitely part of it. And then you know, again, like look look what we've seen them do with Garrett Wilson. I mean, we just, you, we've we've seen them move him all over. Mm-hmm you're just you're trying to get your best guys on the field you're trying to create you know mismatches you're trying to put guys you know in in position to 
to really, um, you know, attack the defense. Um, so it just, you know, you, you recruit guys that you think can, can, you know, be multiple. I, I think that you can do that a lot. So I mean, you do that a linebacker a little bit too. I mean, I, I don't think they recruit many of those classic mics anymore. I think they just recruit guys who are big and can run. And then they just kind of figure that out later. Um, so it's, it's kind of the new, I guess the new wave of, of, you know, is, is you know, and we're seeing this, you're seeing this across, you know, basketball too. It's like, we're seeing positionless basketball, you know, it's, it's kind of, translating over to football now of guys who can just line up three or four different spots and just makes it so hard to game plan for a team when, when you don't know where someone's going to be lined up every snap. Well, and you look at the, the X position, you think of you know, Michael Thomas, Jalen Harris, Benjamin Victor, the, these six, three, six, four, six, five guys. And then Garrett Wilson shows up as a true freshman at like six foot, 185 pounds. And he's an X. And he can play bigger than he is. And that's, I think that's what we see with Kojo Antwi as well, who, who plays bigger. I think is stronger than Garrett Wilson as a freshman and fights for the ball. So uh, pretty big pickup number 84 in the scoop 100. Any final thoughts before we get out of here and uh, on Kojo Antwi? Yeah. I mean, I, I thought this might be Heartline's best recruiting job of, of the cycle. Um you know, we, we can probably argue that back and forth. Obviously, he was ahead of the curve on Keon Grays, but I think that was a guy that, you know, they knew they would get if they, you know, if they made the move. Um, and then Burton was kind of just an early lean or whatever. Um, you know, they did they did steal Caleb Brown from Michigan, but Michigan's got their own problems right now. You know, you look at Antwi, and again, this was a guy who at one point maybe was leaning Texas A&M, at one point maybe was leaning Georgia. You got the academics factor. You got the Alabama, you know, factor in there. And then he goes out to USC with – they're recruiting those Georgia kids. They, they're getting Michael Williams. i probably getting Kristen Miller here. So, you know, you, you, you dodge several bullets here. You, you maybe arguably come from behind uh, in June and, and put a great visit together. And so I just – I felt like this was the one that they really had to work – super hard for and i this was this was a great job uh landing this kid i th- i thought i think anytime you get a georgia receiver away from georgia that's a pretty big win because they they keep receivers they bring in receivers all, all kinds of talent there and they need them too i mean the, if you look yeah. at it i mean he did not take the path of, of least resistance here uh going to ohio state i mean they were they were fighting the depth chart arguments the whole way well, uh, the entire family, the path of least, least resistance, uh, you know, means nothing to them. And so this is, I guess it falls right in line with the way the family has, has been brought up. So thank you, Mark. Uh, reminder, uh, this is a uh, gives in the bank. If you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe to gives in the bank. It's usually Mark and Bill Green, a much better show than, uh, than me. Stepping in for Mark and, and, we and Mark ha- stepping in for Bill. Bill and, I, Bill and I are getting together. We, we will have a midweek we're, we're, you know, classic. We're going to play the greatest hits. We're going to get the band back together and play the hits. So we're going to, that's coming here probably the next 48 hours. Sounds good. And then, uh, gosh, I need to talk to Tom because we probably need to record a Buckeye weekly here in the next, oh, I don't know, day or so. So, um, check out the Buckeye scoop.com. There's going to be more on the, the entry commitment. Mark will have a breakdown of what the Buckeyes are getting. And, uh, that's about it. We will talk, we will talk to you guys later.